I started out as a hatchery biologist and now I'm a manager, but my real love is nature. And so anything I can do to help preserve and restore uh, our natural environment and ecosystem is a real plus for me. All this thing, the elk, the elk are coming back, the peregrine falcon are coming back, this and that. People don't think about some of the fish that are coming back to Kentucky and explain to me what this huge uh, fish is coming around here and, and did he used to be here in great numbers? The lake sturgeon were abundant in the Ohio River, but there's only a very few left, if any, uh, of, the, of the natural uh, population that used to exist here. Uh, overfishing, water pollution, dams have all uh, harmed those populations extensively. Tell us what a process like this would involve to, to try to bring this species back. An adult to spawn needs to be in the 40 to 50 pound range and have been well nourished on invertebrates and that's difficult to do in the hatchery. So today essentially all the sturgeon that are raised are collected by uh, biologists in Wisconsin and they're actually catching those fish in the act of spawning at their natural spawning sites. We got some eggs from Wisconsin. On the whole scale of fish eggs, these are large. Uh, the individual eggs about the size of a BB. They had been transferred to these screens, these floating trays with screen, and the, when the eggs stay on top of the screen and the fry swim down through them as they hatch. And then we've got a like a floor scrubbing brush down there that's weighted and that gives them a place to hide. Uh, they don't like the light at this stage of the game and so they'll all be hiding under there. When these hatch, they're larval. They're probably two-thirds of an inch long and about the diameter of the BB when they hatch with a blunt, blunt nose and a kind of no features on the face. In about two weeks, they'll, they'll look somewhat, they'll be recognizable as sturgeon. They'll have a, that triangular snout on them. They'll have a, a bottom mouth. The, the large scale-like scoots on the side will become, will become noticeable. And what will happen with these? Uh, our goal is to raise some 10 to 12 inch fish. Are you going to stock them throughout? Kentucky no. and Ohio. Uh, because these are Mississippi River strain fish, uh, we're going to stock in the upper Cumberland River. Uh, that'll be above Lake Cumberland uh, and in between Lake Cumberland and the Cumberland Falls. Well, we're here to release a uh, hatchery reared lake sturgeon that we received a year ago uh, in the form of fertilized eggs from Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. It's pretty monumental uh, considering the last lake sturgeon reported from Kentucky's waters was caught right here in the Cumberland River in 1954. We have our environmental science group and a bunch of my junior ROTC students from Corbin High School and uh, we're here today to help reintroduce the lake sturgeon back into uh, Kentucky's river. I didn't even know what a sturgeon was. Nobody ever told me about a sturgeon. I saw it and I was like, wow, they're so different from the other fish that you see around here. You know, like this. I, I think that's one of the most important reasons that we're out here today, is to be able to show these young kids good things that we can do for our environment, plus all the bad things they see us doing to the environment. When they see us reintroducing these native species back into, onto our land or into our water, it's a wonderful thing, and they will grow up with the memories of this, and hopefully they will be better stewards of our land and water than perhaps my generation has been. It's going to be difficult in that it's going to take time uh, because of the unique life history of the lake sturgeon. They don't reach sexual maturity or are able to reproduce until they're 20 to 25 years of age. So it won't be possible to evaluate natural reproduction you know, in the river uh, for a long time. And we anticipate releasing more fish next year and then in the following years. So once we get enough, uh, we'll be able to, to better evaluate uh, survival and, and uh, 
habitat usage and, and the movement. They don't actually feel like a fish with scales. It's more of a, of a, uh, of a little uh, rubbery surface to them. I didn't touch it, I was afraid to. I told some of them today that some of these fish, you know, if they do well and they, they make it, they could very well outlive them. Um, you know, the estimated uh, lifespan, and this is based on the, the northern populations, is anywhere from 75 to 150 years. So size range from, in length, from, uh, you know, five to, to seven and a half feet and you know, weight you know, anywhere from 200 to, to 300 pounds. So this is one fish that uh, we can work with to sort of be a symbol for uh, what we've done to the environment and what we can do. And I hope now that they can you know, get repopulated, that way we can, for future generation, we can fish them. So once in a lifetime opportunity and I'm, I'm glad to be a part of it. All right, you just saw our segment on the reintroduction of the lake sturgeon. We have Matt Thomas here with us, research biologist. Recently I got an email by a nice fellow who I'm sure didn't have any idea that he caught one of these things and we saw a picture of it on the tailgate, which probably gave you heartburn. <laughs> what did you, you think when you heard about this? Well, in, in some ways it's, it's good news that people are actually seeing these fish. You know, I didn't think uh, that we would be seeing them this, this soon. So. This is an indication that at least some of them are surviving and they're, they're moving around. So in, in that way it's good, but uh, we've, we've got a no harvest regulation. So it's illegal to have them in your possession, either dead or alive. We need to try to put these fish back whenever you catch them uh, so that they'll, they'll grow. You know, this species is slow growing. It's got low potential for population growth because of its life history characteristics. They, um, you know, they reproduce every four to eight years, uh, and, and these fish will take them probably at least 15 years before they're even capable of reproducing. So they're vulnerable uh, to depletion, uh, if, if, even through sport fishing. So these fish apparently will bite on, I think he was using probably worms and a hook. Yeah. So if you do happen to see one of these fish, if you do happen to catch one, that's fine. Take the hook out, put it back, these are wonderful, wonderful creatures that can grow up to the size of 60, 70 pounds, and uh, they're not to be taken out of the waters. If you do catch one, we might be interested in, so, in that information. If you do catch one, uh, you know, estimate the size or whatever, but getting back in the water as soon as possible. And how could they contact you? The 1 800. Uh, yeah, the 1 800 number. 1 800 858 1549. Again, 1 800 858 1549. We'd be glad to hear this information, but just remember, please, please. Put these back. This is equal to a fisheries guy of the elk reintroduction program. So it's important to these guys, it's important to us, and it's important to your kids. They're going to be catching these huge fish down the road. Right.